the Canik Meta SFT. The Canik SFT is the is a Turkish striker fired nine millimeter polymer frame handgun chambered in nine millimeter. And for a gun that sits just under $500, it's really good. It's a really good gun. So, so one of the things that Canix, see, I want to say Canique because before I used to call it Canique, and then I learned the hard way that it's actually Canic or Janique, but it's really Canic because they've adopted the more Americanized aspect of the pronunciation. But Canics are known for the triggers. So we're just gonna jump right into the trigger because I, I have to say that this trigger is, well, just see for yourself, like, so like that, so now I've, broke, I've broken a shot, now I'm gonna reset. That's the reset. I want you to see that again. Shoot, reset, here it goes. That is insane. For a polymer gun chambered in nine millimeter, to have a reset that short? <laughs> this is stupid. That's the type of trigger you get in guns that cost three to $4,000. That is insane. So what is it? It's a full-size gun, essentially what it is. It's a full-size gun that can be honestly adopted for competition. And even though I call it a full-size gun, it's really not that big proportionately. If you really look at the gun, it actually fooled me for a second because I thought it was more of like a mid-size gun because it gives me a little bit more Glock 19 than it does Glock 17. Before you finish watching this video, a word from our sponsor. Have you ever thought about making a living in the firearms industry? If you enjoy gun repair, ballistics, and learning about firearms, Sonoran Desert Institute's online courses might just be a good fit for you. To find out more, visit sdi.edu or call 480-999-4767 today. All the ammo used in this video is brought to you by Nosler, maker of the most innovative, most accurate, and most effective bullets and ammunition in the industry. And this, this is a Glock 17 profile, so to speak. But Glock 17 holds 17 rounds. This one holds 18 plus one. Also comes with a 20 round magazine, but I forgot them. Sorry. So, how does it shoot? Now, this Meta SFT is a little bouncy. That's the first thing I noticed when I, when I started shooting it. It likes to bounce. Like, watch. But the weird thing is, that doesn't mean it recoils hard. It just kind of likes to, has this like, natural tendency to kind of want to bounce, but it comes right back on the target. I usually don't like my guns very bouncy. I like my guns very streamlined to shoot flat, so I can't call this a flat shooting gun. The thing about it though is, because of its trigger and its kind of rhythmic bouncy nature to it, you can run this gun really fast. Like, look, look, it's just, like, it's stupid. <laughs> like, you can run this gun. Um, now, can you run it accurately? That, I think, is gonna take some training. Because, like I said, it still bounces because it's not the most flattest shooting gun ever. But, under slower fire, it does what it needs to. Now, from an ergonomic standpoint, I think, for a gun in this price point, sub 500, the ergonomics on this gun are phenomenal. They are really, really good. This gun is one of those guns where when you look at it, you can instantly tell that it's a very ergonomic gun or a very pleasing gun to hold in hand. Because you can see here is of course you have these, so right, this little grip texture here on the side, which is fine. A lot of guns have that. And then of course you have this squared off texturing on the back of it which is fine, a lot of guns have that, but what you start noticing are the subtle stuff that really kind of add to the ergonomics on this gun. So like on the front of the gun, you do have that texture, that the rather aggressive sand texturing on the front of the gun, which I like because, of, like I said, I'm gripping a lot by a large part with this part of my fingers and the back strap. The back strap is removable and they do have different sizes for it, so that's great. But then you start seeing little things like this relief right here. You kind of have 
this relief on the back end so that when you get your hand on a gun, it gives you a little bit of a ledge to, to hold on to whenever you're firing a gun. And then there's some reliefs here on the top of the gun as well, right underneath the slide. And you do get a really rather good high bore access on this gun. And I gotta say, even underneath the trigger guard, you got a like, little relief cut here for the trigger guard, little relief cut here on the middle part of the trigger guard, so that when you get this gun in your hand, it feels incredibly natural. And then on top of that, it points really naturally too. So I'm not stuck having to do that weird Glock 17 kind of whatever the weirdness that you have to do with the Glock 17. I'm also gonna do a video about the Glock 17 because I don't like the Glock 17. I'm just gonna, st I'm gonna stop it there. I'll do a whole new video on why I don't like the Glock 17. But the Glock 17 in and the Glock 19 are gold standards for midsize and full size guns. But I'll tell you why I don't like them in another video. Um, now, as far as features, you have what I like to call the surfboard, mini surfboard paddle release. I like big slide locks. And I cannot lie. Um, there's something about them, They're more of like a fidget, pleasurable fidgety thing for me more than anything, because I can just get my hand on a gun and I can get my hand on it and just drop it with relative ease instead of seeking and searching for it on guns that have a smaller version of it. And one of the things about this particular gun that I really like is the slide. Like it's a very smooth racking slide. Like for instance, like here, just like playing. I don't know if it translates auditorily, but this is really smooth. And the spring on here is pretty tight, but like again, it's a bouncy spring, which I think is what gives it its kind of tendency to want to flip a little bit more than I like. But this, this is very, damn it, Peter. <laughs> like I was saying, this slide, I, I, I love it. And then now the serrations on the front and the back, you kind of have these half serrations here for press checking. They're good enough. Um, I'm, I'm not gonna sing praises about it. I do like them visually. I think they're very subtle. I think they're very classy. But as far as functionally, I mean, they get the job done, but it's not like, oh my gosh, these things just grip. But by and large, that I, I really like the slide on this gun. I don't know why, but I do. And I mean, it's incredibly beveled all over the place. It's like they took their time to want to make sure that it was as lean and trim as it possibly can be without being unnecessarily bulky, like some guns that shall not go mentioned. That doesn't make any sense, but you know what's going up. It's a Glock 17. Um, of course, you get your, your little rail here for your lights if you want to throw a light on there. This gun is optics ready, so it does come with an optics cut, but it's rather limited because the slide on this gun is actually rather thin. So. The thing about that, I probably will never put an optic on this gun because the optics that it's set up for, like uh, the shield and I think the, the Trigicon Mini, Micro, SS, whatever the thing's called, those are really the only type of optics that'll fit on here. And I don't like small red dot optics on my handguns. I like a big window because what ends up happening is if I go to draw and I go to shoot and let's say my red dot's not working, I, then I'd like to have the ability to use my iron sights, which this gun has. It has metal iron sights, and they sit rather high so you can co-witness on your red dot. The problem is, is that that window is so small that you end up just getting sucked into the window. And I don't like that. I like, I like a bigger window. So me personally, I probably won't be putting a red dot on this gun. I'll probably just leave it as slick just like it is now. Um, but then you also have, you have this chamber indicator right there that makes all of the super, super, super hardcore gun guys really angry because they don't like chamber indicators. I know why, I get why. I don't have a problem with them, but some guys do. The slide finish is another thing that stands out to me because it is a very nice satin deep black, but that's because it's actually nitrided and then Cerakoted over the nitride. So you just have to kind of have like two layers of protection on a gun, so to speak. The gun itself, for being at the price point that it is. Now keep in mind, it's relative, right? Because a sub just under $500 gun 10 years ago would, is pretty normal. Thing is now, a sub, sub $500 gun now, now it's considered affordable. But even still, if this gun would have come out five, 10 years ago, I still think this gun would be considered extremely high value for the money. And I mean extremely high value because you get, a, you get a gun that, but for not having the 
popularity namesake that other guns in this, in this category have, it feels every bit as good. It looks every bit as good. It shoots every bit as good. The trigger is probably the best striker fire trigger I've ever felt in a polymer gun. But say the Walther PDP. And then at that point, you're kind of getting into really subjective territory. But you saw the trigger on this damn thing. It's insane. Um, I don't like this red safe, trigger safety thing here. I don't know why they keep doing that. I don't like it. I just wish it was black, but I get it. it it's distinguishable. It makes it stand out. I get the point. But I mean, you got a four and a half inch, maybe 4.6 inch barrel. Like I said, this is a full size gun. So for somebody looking for something sub $500 for a home defense gun, that could also double as a competition gun because at the same time, there's a, as you can see here, there's a little screw set here. It comes with a magwell. You can put a magwell on this gun and be able to load this thing without any issues. I, I, I can't even, I wanna say for its price, it's amazing. But I don't think that's really fair to the gun because though it is a more affordable gun, in and of itself, just remove the price aspect of it. This is a damn, damn good gun. My only knock would say it's a little more bouncy, a little bouncy for my liking. But other than that, this is a damn good gun. Just generally wholesale, notwithstanding the price. But then when you introduce the price component, it's like, damn, that is a lot of gun for the money. The Kanique Meta SFT. Guns aren't political. That's why I need your help getting this message to spread on YouTube by clicking the thumbs up button, leaving a comment to let me know what you think of the video, then subscribing to the channel. But most importantly, click that bell symbol. For products featured in this video, click the links in the description.